Hey guys, this is a video about Finney's egg removal surgery. And here's Finney. She's on day two post-op and she's just chilling here on her blanket. Uh, but I just wanted to make a video just to kind of help anybody else out uh, know what to expect before this type of surgery because I had to do a lot of research and ask the vet a lot of questions to understand really what it was. So first off, how did we know that Finney had eggs inside of her? Well, she started acting completely crazy. She was running around all the time. She had tons of energy all of a sudden. She was glass surfing, uh, jumping off of things. She was digging, she was pooping a lot. She would eat tons one day and then hardly eat anything the next. So just really unusual erratic behavior. So I knew something was up. And then I could feel actually like these little balls inside the sides of her belly. So we brought her to the vet and sure enough, yes, an ultrasound showed that there were eggs inside of her. The vet told us to take her home, give her a nice big dig box and with a mixture of uh, topsoil and play sand and give her a calm and peaceful environment and hope that she would lay her eggs. So we did that. We gave her a big dig box, which she actually did dig in quite a bit, but she never laid her eggs. So then we brought her back to the vet a few weeks later. She had another ultrasound and it showed that the eggs were slowly starting to develop shells. So the, egg, the vet was still hopeful that she was gonna lay them. Uh, she never did. <laughs> so again, uh, <laughs> we went back to the vet. This was after about another month and the vet said we should probably suggest, or the vet suggested that we uh, consider the surgery, the egg removal surgery. So there was four months between the time we found out she had the eggs and the actual surgery date. Under normal circumstances, a dragon would have laid the eggs in that period. Um, so I knew the surgery was the only option to save her. So um, yeah, there really was no option because if the eggs stay inside a dragon, it can make them really sick, especially if they kind of break inside her um, and it can actually kill them. So it's important to figure out if your dragon has eggs and to kind of monitor how long they're in there and whether or not you should get a vet's help in taking them out. And besides, Finny really loves costing me money. Don't you, baby girl? Yeah. So she wanted the surgery. Yeah, she didn't want to push them out herself. She wanted to get them taken out. So the surgery itself is actually considered a major surgery. Um, they take out all the eggs and they also remove the ovaries in the hopes that the problem never happens again. Um, the dragon doesn't eat for 24 hours beforehand. It's really important there's no food in their belly because uh, that can cause some major problems if uh, they bring food up during the surgery. And so, you know, you have to go 24 hours with no food. Uh, water is okay. Um, and, you know, typically cats and dogs don't need that, that long of a period without food, but because dragons have really slow metabolisms, they need to go that long because it takes a lot longer to digest their food. So they are given a sedative by needle to make them sleepy and then a tube is placed down their throat so they can breathe. They're given gas during the surgery to keep them asleep. An IV gives them fluids and then the vets and the surgical team, yes she had a surgical team, monitor um, like her, her heart rate with a Doppler. An incision is made down the center of her belly and I'll make another video that shows that incision uh, so check that out. The surgery can last between one and two hours and it can take another couple hours for the dragon to actually wake up. Um, they're actually given a, a separate drug to try and wake them up. But I guess they really love staying asleep and it can take a while just for them to wake up and the vet to call you with an update. Uh, typically the dragon spends the night at the vet clinic, which is good because then they can kind of monitor how she's doing and whether she needs more pain meds. So on the surgery day, Finney read for her surgery first thing in the morning. The vet gave her a little checkup and did some blood work and injected her with fluids. She was supposed to have her surgery in the morning, but there were other emergencies at the clinic. So Finney had to wait until early afternoon for hers. I didn't actually get to talk to the vet after the surgery until 6 p.m. at night. Um, and that's because they wanna wait until the dragon's fully awake and alert before they give you an update on how they're doing. So for Finney, her surgery went really well. They removed over 50 eggs at various stages of development and they also removed her ovaries. 
she was getting antibiotics and additional pain meds. The vet said she had a black beard for hours afterwards, but that she was able to hold um, her head up and she was alert and she was kind of trying to walk around. Um, apparently she wasn't too happy to be there. Uh, she, <laughs> she tried to escape her incubator apparently. Um, so this incubator has oxygen pumping into it, so the sound was probably a little frightening to her. And if you want to see what these little incubators look like, go ahead and Google um, intensive care or pet intensive care incubator and you can kind of see these little boxes that they keep pets in after they've had surgery. Uh, I would advise to send your dragon to the surgery on a soft blanket um, and then request that she's allowed to actually recover on that blanket just so she has something soft under her and a little piece of home so that, you know, she can smell home on the blanket. Maybe it'll be comforting. Uh, so with COVID, I wasn't able to see her after the surgery, obviously, but the vet was really sweet and she actually let me talk to her on the phone when she was in the incubator. So. That was really sweet, so shout out to the vets and Finney's surgical team at the Ontario Veterinary College in Guelph, Ontario, Canada. So they were really, really sweet to her and, and you know, really good at, <laughs> at doing my requests. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to ask silly questions like that, like to speak to your dragon afterwards, because, you know, chances are that these vets who are working with exotics understand how people get attached to them just as much as they would a cat or dog. So. Yeah, just ask them if you can talk to your dragon afterwards. Uh, so when Finney was at the vets, I cleaned out her enclosure. I took the dig box out of the enclosure, removed all the climbers and hard or scratchy surfaces that could hurt her stitches. It's important to get all the dirt and the dig box out of the enclosure uh, because you have to keep her stitches clean and dry until they heal. So when I picked up Finney the next day from surgery, she was really happy to see me. She was very dopey. Um, she looked a little frightened, to be honest. Uh, she climbed up my chest and immediately hid under my neck. Um, she just laid in her bed the whole way home. And the vet gave me all her medicine. Uh, be sure to ask beforehand if some of the meds need to stay frozen so you can bring a small cooler with you um, and have a nice pack in there so you can keep them cold on the ride home. And uh, so Finney came home with frozen antibiotics and needles, two different pain meds, one being an anti-inflammatory that I, and those two I was to administer by mouth. Um, and so be sure you understand how to store these meds, whether they should be stored in the freezer, the fridge, or at room temperature. One of Finney's meds is supposed to be given with food, so just make sure you read the directions on each of the drugs. And the vet told me I didn't need to adjust her lighting or heating at all. I asked if she needed some heat at night after the surgery and she said no. Uh, she said that too much heat will actually hurt her incision more, so make sure your temps are right and not too hot. Uh, Finney was capable of walking around when I first brought her home, but if your dragon can't do this, please don't keep her under the basking light constantly. It will be too hot for her and it could cause her womb to hurt. So as you can see from her enclosure, I added <laughs> a lot of blankets. It is essentially just one big soft area uh, just to protect you know, her incision. Everything that was hard or scratchy has been removed and so everywhere she goes she is on a soft comfy blanket. So it's important that you do that for her and give her some peace so she can sleep and heal. Uh, the vet told me that I could feed Finney normally when she came home. Uh, Finney didn't feel like eating as right when she got home and for several hours afterwards, which is normal. Uh, I don't think she ate until about probably 5 o'clock at night on the day that I brought her home. Um, you know, and she, your dragon may not feel like eating bugs too, so uh, be sure to ask your vet if you should get some Emeraid critical care food to feed by syringe while they are recovering. I've made two videos on how we mix the Emeraid food with green smoothie instead of water, so it's extra healthy, so you can check that out. That would be a good food to syringe feed your dragon while they're healing. Uh, so yeah, it's been two days since the surgery and Finney is acting more like herself. She's not as dopey and she's moving around a little bit more. She's eating her green smoothies and she looks more alert. Mostly she's just sitting around, as you can see, she's doing. She hasn't really moved this whole video, but yeah, she's just sitting around healing. I know that her belly doesn't really hurt right now. The pain meds are working because she's actually laying on her belly. Uh, when she woke up this morning and the pain meds had been wearing off, she didn't want to put her belly on, on the ground. So 
I think she's she's doing okay right now. Uh, her incision looks good so far. We're keeping an eye on it for redness and pus because that would mean it was getting infected. And we go back to the vet in a week for a checkup and to see if she needs to continue with the pain meds. And that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll try and answer them the best we can. Um, yeah, I'll post another video of her incision so you can see what that looks like. All right, Finn, you want to say bye? <laughs> and he's like, I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. All right, guys, see you later.